Heavenly Father, what a beautiful day it was today, and uh, what a beautiful event we got to witness. Um, just a short time ago, Victoria and Ryan uh, pledged themselves to one another, and uh, we know it honors you, Father, when we, we embrace that wonderful gift of marriage that you've given us. Uh, you just love it when we close the deals, and we love that, and we know that you love it, Lord. So uh, with that uh, in mind, we'd, uh, uh, we'd just like to ask, Father, that uh, from this point forward, as uh, Victoria and Ryan just uh, launch off into this adventure together, that they, uh, that you would uh, just never take your eye off them, uh, that you would uh, guide them and uh, lead them uh, every step of the way. And uh, we ask that uh, uh, you would bless their lives with, uh, with happiness and with health and uh, with whatever prosperity that you chose, uh, that you, you decide, Lord, to uh, bestow on them, and whatever challenges they face, that uh, they would uh, seize on it uh, with, uh, as an opportunity to grow closer to each other, and uh, closer to family, and certainly closer to you. Uh, Father, we ask that uh, their lives would certainly be rich with love, with, uh, with laughter, with, uh, with friendship, Lord, and, uh, and certainly with the knowledge uh, that indeed your eye uh, is always upon them and, uh, and, and, and the certainty of knowing that they can be counted among your children. So we ask that tonight that you would bless uh, each of them and all of us in this celebration, uh, be among us, uh, sit at our dinner tables as we uh, begin to enjoy this meal and the fellowship with one another. So. In your glorious name, uh, Heavenly Father, we pray in that uh, of your glorious and precious Son. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, ordinarily we'd ask you to remain standing tonight. But I'm going to ask all of you to please remain seated. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky not to have just one toast but four toasts, which is why we want you to be so comfortable. What I'd like to do right now gives me great pleasure to turn the microphone over to the bride's dad, Michael, to share a few special words. On behalf of my wife, Dina, and I, uh, as well as uh, Pam and Al, the uh, bride and groom's parents, we want to welcome you to this uh, wonderful and glorious event. Um, we, are, we are really truly grateful that you are all part of our lives, both family and friends. And to share this special day with Victoria and Ryan, we really couldn't ask for a better group of people. So we really appreciate you all being here. Um, Before uh, I go into my thing with Victoria, and I will try to do this quickly because I know there's three other toasts, but mine's the longest. So once you get to mine, you're all good. I just want to uh, give some thank yous to some folks that helped make this all happen. Uh, Aunt Karen Soper for that beautiful cake. <laughs> Uncle John Volatile for just an amazing job singing at the uh, Cindy Hool, wherever you are, with Cindy, because I gotta pick you out on something. Uh, you look at my daughter and my my two daughters, Caroline and Victoria, and their hair and, and some of their makeup. <laughs> Amazingly beautiful. I do have a little problem with, with what Cindy did though, because I said make Caroline look nine, nine nineteen. <laughs> She, for you single guys, is underage. <laughs> Sam is married. Victoria is married. Alicia's is not. <laughs> I, I want to thank the Oharonian, very good friends of ours, for relinquishing your living room so Victoria could lay out all our pictures all over your living room and set up that unbelievable tear-jerking tear -jerking, uh, slideshow at the service if you weren't there. That's what almost put me 
over. I, I almost lost it at that point. Uh, Pam and the bridesmaids for helping us pull it all through in the end. We really appreciate all your efforts that you did. Uh, Lisa Sapola for just helping with a bunch of things. Uh, including assisting my wife with some really difficult uh, decisions. And you know, those who planned a big event, including a wedding, you know how difficult that can be. So I really appreciate that. And you really alleviated a lot of stress on Dina, which I personally thank you. <laughs> as, my, as my good friend Scott Goodison is, is commonly heard to say, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> So thank you very much, Lisa, wherever you are. Um, also, we should point out Lisa because if you don't like where you're sitting, or if you don't like that you got invited or didn't get invited, just go see Lisa. <laughs> Last but not least, I have to thank my lovely bride, who really orchestrated this whole event. Um, I also have to thank her for really going easy on the checkbook when she pulled this all together. <laughs> so when I go to speak of, when I go to speak about Victoria, if I'm choking up, that's not because of tears of that. I'm tears of joy because I have a little bit of money left in my hand. <laughs> and doesn't my wife of 25 years just look absolutely amazing? <laughs> so if we don't make it through the heart service, we're leaving in a honeymoon. To don't go look for us. <laughs> Real quick thing, just because of where we're standing, which is the Officers Club, and because of the country we have, which is the most amazing country on the earth, I would like all the folks who have served in the past, currently serving, as well as their spouses or significant others, to stand up. Remember what I said, if I tear up the checkbook joy, it's all in its checkbook joy. <laughs> Victoria, uh, right from the day you were born, you stole my heart. As a baby, you were the absolute fattest, <laughs> baldest, and most totally adorable little thing or big thing that I ever seen. We used to call, we used to, we literally used to call her the Michelin baby. You know, with all the fat rolls and, I mean, she couldn't move. She, she couldn't move. And I don't think she's gained a pound since then. But as she grew, she continued to steal the hearts of everyone. Her grandma, Barbara, and Grandpa Volatile, I remember used to buy these million dollar dresses and, and basically they were, you were her, their toy. And a little Victorian doll with the curly, banana curls and everything, it was just, it was just unbelievable. Um, even Grandma Tuzia, which was my mother who since passed away. <laughs> Grandma Tuzia loved to take credit for all the grandchildren, but she would sit there and say, without me, you would be him. <laughs> we actually had to tell Uncle Craig to stop buying his stuff because he just fell in love with her. And Uncle Craig's not a real uncle. <laughs> Everyone Victoria came across, she just, everybody just fell in love with her, just instantaneously. You have been an absolute joy to raise. You are, you are not just beautiful, you are smart, hardworking, and just totally sweet, all in one. I'm going, to, I'm going to brag on her a little bit now. For you folks that don't know this, she was not only the top of her class in high school, but she was the top of her class in college. Woo! People would always say to, to me, you are so lucky. You guys, Victoria, Victoria, she, you're just so lucky, look at her. She's so easy. Even when she was defiant, I'd ask her to do something and she'd go, okay, daddy, and then just leave. 
And I knew she wasn't going to do it, but it was just so sweet, you know, I really didn't care. <laughs> and I told people, of course, it wasn't luck. I told them it was skill. I mean, it was skillful parroting, really was. <laughs> then we had Luke. stop calling us lucky. <laughs> so I said, I gotta have a rubber match, and I gotta have a rubber match. And then we had Caroline. And then people said, I'm sorry. <laughs> the reality is I have, Dina and I have three absolutely amazing children. Victoria just brings sweetness to wherever she is, and she just, and, and anything she touches is just turns to unbelievable sweetness. My son Luke, when he enters a room, as you noticed, he either brings laughter, or depending on your perspective, crying. And then Caroline, our little spicy one, she just is a total, epitomizes the spirit of fun. And I, I just couldn't be prouder than, than to have all three of them. Victoria, um, checkbook, joy, because I have money in the checkbook, that's why I'm, I'm tearing up. Victoria, as your father, literally this moment, as soon as you were born, I, I thought this moment was going to come, and in the blink of an eye, it's here. And it, everybody said that was going to happen to me, and it, it literally is true. I actually said to mom, when we were walking out of the hospital, I said, they're going to really let us take her? Really? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, what are we doing? I can't take her. <laughs> and now we have to let her go. So, my beautiful daughter, I love you so much. Ryan, real quick. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost over, seriously, I'm almost over. I, wanna, I really wanna thank you for showing respect to me and my wife throughout your dating, but more importantly, I wanna thank you for showing respect to Victoria. Um, that is a, a rare thing in today's society and I greatly appreciate what you are as a man. You are a man of integrity and a man of conviction and I am completely proud to call you my son-in-law and I am very happy that you found my daughter. And just so, again almost done, just so Al and Pam know, Ryan and I negotiated where the holidays were gonna be spent and that kind of thing. <laughs> so, we, it's all split up evenly. You get VJ Day. <laughs> so, in all seriousness, some piece of advice, yeah. some advice that I, I heard this long ago at a wedding, and you know, there's a common myth that, that a marriage is a 50-50 proposition, and I, I will tell you, it can't be, that's not, that cannot be further from the truth. <laughs> It's not funny. It's a uh, it's hundred hundred percent. Because nothing in life, including a marriage, takes only 50% effort. So happiness, health, and a little bit of wealth wouldn't hurt either. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll hear also from Alicia, Caroline, and Brian. So, as you now know, my name is Alicia, and Victoria and I have been best friends since we were six. And before I get into my speech, I'd like to take a second to say a few thank yous. First, I'd like to thank Victoria and Ryan and their families for inviting us all to be a part of this very special day. And second, I would especially like to thank Mr. T for introducing me to Victoria 16 years ago when we were in the first grade. Because if it wasn't for him, I would have never met my best friend. In our years of friendship, Victoria and I have done everything together, including go to all the same schools, including college, 
wear the same clothes, and go on family vacations together. So it shouldn't come as a surprise to any of you that I was with Victoria the night that she met Ryan, which was a few nights before our freshman year at URI. Victoria and I were at an event called First Night, which was to introduce incoming freshmen to the school's clubs and activities. We both wanted to go to the Inner Varsity Fellowship table, and when we got there, we were greeted by Ryan. We sat down at a table, and Ryan and Victoria began to talk about film classes, I believe, because Victoria was going to be taking some. And that's the last thing I honestly can remember them talking about, because from then on, all I did was stare at Victoria, because I could not believe my eyes. I had never seen her so smitten with a guy before. <laughs> When Ryan got up from the table and he walked away, it took me about two seconds to go and say to her, ooh, you think he's cute? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Victoria was blushing at this point, but I can't be 100% sure since it was dark out. But I'd like to think that I was the one who put the thought in Victoria's head that she liked Ryan, because nine months later, they went on their first date and the rest is history. I want to keep the rest of this speech short and sweet. So, Victoria, I love you. I am so unbelievably happy for you and Ryan that you found each other because I could not have imagined a more perfect guy for you. And Ryan, you are officially the luckiest guy in the world to be married to Victoria because there is no one else like her. I wish you both all the happiness and joy in the world as you start your new life together as husband and wife. So, cheers. Sister of the bride. Victoria, you're married. I think this is going to take a while to kick in. I can't say enough how happy and excited I am for you. I see how happy Ryan makes you, and every time you look at him, you just light up. Ryan, you are honestly the perfect match for my sister, and I have no doubt that you will treat him right. Victoria, being your sister, I'd be lying if I said this wasn't hard for me. I've always kind of looked up to you, you've always been there for me, and more than that, you dealt with me. You're basically the definition of the perfect older sister. You are one of the most selfless people I know. You're constantly giving and giving, and if there's anyone in this world that deserves this happiness, it's you. Now, I'm basically going to be an only child at home, and I'm not really sure how I'm going to deal with that. So be expecting visits from me. A sister needs her sister. Victoria, you are beautiful, and Ryan, you are a lucky guy. I love you both so much, and I wish you the best. follow that. But, uh... <laughs> Good evening everyone, my name is Brian, I'm Brian's cousin, the best man. But uh, before I say anything more, how absolutely beautiful does Ryan look tonight? <laughs> that, that hair must have taken all morning. <laughs> but seriously folks, I think all the men out there agree that Ryan's taken a very beautiful and intelligent woman off the market tonight. And likewise, all the women out there agree that today is Saturday. <laughs> Ryan and I have uh, known each other since we were kids. And over the years, I feel like he's changed remarkably little. For the better, for the better. <laughs> he's always had a kind heart. He always tries to do the right thing and he's always there for his friends. And I know he'll always be there for Victoria. 
He might be a few hours late, but he will be there. <laughs> and Victoria will always be there for Ryan as well, because both of them understand that marriage isn't just a word, it's a sentence, a life sentence. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I'd like to propose a toast for the lasting love that will bind Ryan and Victoria together for the rest of their lives. May it bring happiness to them always and to those of us fortunate enough to be their friends.